weeks, as you guys know, if you don't know, we don't check your email, please. But come June, we're gonna have the summer and the boys will be teaching Sunday school. So get nervous now. <laughs> but we'll mix it all up. It's gonna be good. And June 19th, I know it's Father's Day, which I don't care, but it's Father's Day, but we're having the church anniversary because there's some schedules that don't last. So June 19th we'll have a normal morning service, and then obviously we'll have food, uh, Lord's Supper, then we'll have food. And then we'll have a couple boys get up and then no evening service. So that's June 19th. It's a month from today. I'm saying it now because I'm not going to say it again at Sunday school because John's going to have to look. Johnny Snow's got to look at Susan. Susan's going to have to write it down and then remind him. Is that, is that not on June 10th? It should. <laughs> oh, I didn't think of it. Oh, no. Oh, I might have a message for that. <laughs> All right, Revelation 1. Revelation 1. I'm trying to finish up the Judgment Seat of Christ the next two Sundays. You say, why do you spend so much time on this subject, preacher? Because it is the most profound subject in your life as a saved child of God. There's nothing else more important for you and I to focus on in our lives, whether you're single, married, divorced. I'm divorced, I can't serve sure you can. Uh, whether you're saved, uh, I mean, you're, uh, you're divorced, single, whatever, have kids, don't have kids. If you're saved, your most important day on your calendar is the day you meet your Savior face to face and give an account of what you've done in that body, whether it be good or bad. Heart attitude and all those things are kind of going to come into play. He's going to take the fire of his word, the fire of his eyes, and try those words of what sort they are. Uh, wood, hay, and stubble. We looked at gold, silver, precious stones last week. Uh, those are the good things to have, the things that uh, get tried and refined and last forever. Uh, I'd like to take a look at the crowns this week if we could. So, uh, why would you need a crown? One more time. That's, that's part of it. But those are the four times. But why would you need a crown? Who needs a crown? King. There you go, man. Revelation 1, the Bible says this, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, showed him his servants things which will surely come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear a record of the word of, uh, word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of his prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John of the seven churches, which are in Asia, grace be unto you in peace, from him which is and which was and which is to come, from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins with his own blood, that made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Seems to be two classes of folks that go out into the millennial reign, kings and priests. You say, oh, that's a stupid thing. Doesn't it? What does David say over in Psalm 84? What would he rather be? A doorkeeper in the what? Well, what's the house of God, man? In the New Testament, it's you and I. In the Old Testament, it's either a tabernacle, a tent, or it's actually the temple Solomon built. So he'd rather be a doorkeeper than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. That's a great verse. Uh, not everybody gets the same reward. We, we've seen that laid out. God is not a communist. You have a uh, you have a uh, an inheritance in Jesus Christ that is equal across the board because of eternal life in Him. But you and I are joint heirs with Christ according to how we suffer with Him in Romans eight. And we look at gold, silver, precious stones. I'm only at the crowns this week. I think they're pretty cool. I'm going to shock you. I don't think they. Uh, I think one of them specifically has dual application. You'll see that in the Word of God this morning. But most of them are found in the Pauline epistles. And are applicable to you and I, specifically the church age. Go over to Revelation 5. Revelation 5, please. Uh, Brother Guido, can you pick up uh, 5, 5, 6 and go to, for, to verse 10. Hey, it's good to have you back, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I forgot what the verse was. And you too, Kathleen. <laughs> six through uh, ten. Uh, six through ten. Chapter five, six through ten. Then pray for it. I don't know people get my room. Yeah, that's it. I mean, Ben's whipping stuff around like this. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need the devils anymore. We no, that's it. That. We're there. He has many. <laughs> and it's I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, for the lamb is that the same. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth and called over. He came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. When he 
had taken the book to Fort Beach and four or twenty others fell down before the land, having every one of having every one of them hearts and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou hast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and every tongue people and nation. God has made us unto our God. He has made us unto our God, mm -hmm. kings and priests. There you go. We shall reign on the earth. You gonna pray for us, please? Mm -hmm. that, no, it's alright, man. It's not, not a big deal. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the privilege of being here today and honor you. Amen. Studying of your word and our prayers. And saying your word that your word does not return void. We claim that on this morning. Open our understanding to your word as usual. And help us be doers, not just hearers. Bless the Sunday school hour and the blessing of the main service. Thank you for getting my body here this morning. Amen. I ask all these things and thanks in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 9, we'll hit the first one. First Corinthians 9. These are not in any particular order, per se, but First Corinthians 9. Let's look at the crowd this morning. I know we talked about it before, but I think sometimes in the Christian life, when you don't talk about just Jesus Christ, you don't talk about this stuff, it doesn't become real to you. You have the opportunity to earn a crown. In fact, you have the opportunity to win more than one crown. Now, as Brother Steve said, we'll look at him in Revelation 4. It says the four and twenty elders cast their crowns before his feet. And while I don't have a problem with that, I don't really know who the four and twenty elders are. If they're the twelve sons of Jacob, I, I don't a hundred percent know who they are, to be honest with you. But it's a great figure and typology that, you know, I'm doing everything for him, but at the same time, he gives me back a crown and says, You get you just read it. We get to reign on earth based on our service now. Uh, folks, you don't get to rule and reign now. God gives you a position like that, and you enjoy the blessings of God on this earth, praise God for it. But I think too many saved people want their millennial inheritance down here like the prodigal. And they'd rather have it down here and get up to the home and they're bankrupt. Yep. Saved, washed in the blood, but you probably end up being a priest or maybe a doorkeeper at best. Saved, yet so is by fire. Saved just by the skin of your teeth, the blood of Jesus Christ. Now thank God for it, but I mean, honestly, that's all you look forward to is going home to heaven. You don't look forward to the day you get to talk to your Savior. I know you get to talk to him now. I understand that. But you don't get you don't look forward to that day you want to see him. Man, I can't I can't wait to see him here. And actually see him face to face. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the class. That's gonna be cool. So the first crown, Brother Jonathan, get me uh, you probably know where I'm going, so if you know where I'm going. Man. Uh, start in verse 20 and go to 27, Brother Jonathan. Jaffer, no smiling, this is not funny time. Okay, how am I going to draw this one? I have no idea. <laughs> Was it 9, 20, 27? Yeah, if you can take it from uh, 20 to 27 in chapter 9. Yes, sir. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, and under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without law, be not without the law to God, but under the law to I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I have made all things to all men, that I might my own means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may attain. And every man that striveth for the mystery is temperate and all. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castle. Okay, so the first crown we'll look at is the incorruptible crown. You can see by the context it has to do with your behavior to those outside of you, in fact, to all. You're going to be temperate in all things. Uh, I don't like those first six letters of the word temperate. 
because I have on occasion lost my temper. That's not funny. But you lose, you, you know what tempering, what, how do you temper steel? How do you temper metals? Okay. Or glass? High heat, low heat. What do you do? So you can find that point where it becomes unbreakable. Well, that's what, isn't one of the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. temperance, where I have control over my body. You just read it. I keep it under my body, bringing this to I have control over my body that I don't lose control of that temperance. You can only do that through the spirit of God, because let me try to tell you, people tick you right off. And they can tick you off in less than a heartbeat, and you lose, that, that's the common phrase, I lost my temper. Well, what happened? You didn't get to that high point enough or that low point. You didn't get stretched out enough where it doesn't really bother you. Let them say, I mean, Jesus Christ is, a, you're going to see the Lord. Now, now on, on the Lord's head in Revelation 19, how many crowns does he have? Many crowns. You're going to see in these five crowns, he fits every one. Did Jesus Christ get slapped in the face? Did Jesus Christ get spit on? Did Jesus Christ get questioned about his family lineage? Do you ever say anything back? Did he ever snarkily or sinfully answer those people? Never. He always held his temper. So he's got this crown locked away. But the Bible says it's incorruptible. Now, don't you have an inheritance in, uh, over in 1 Peter 1? What kind of inheritance do you have over there? Incorruptible that fadeth not away. It can't be messed with. You know what rust is in the Bible. Rust is a corruptive agent. It's, what, it's oxidation. It gets in there and wrecks that metal. This crown, if you can earn it, will never rust or fade away. Right. You'll have it forever. Well, how do I get that crown? You just read it. I bring it, less by any means, when I preach others, I myself become a castaway. Now, when you preach the Word of God, you've got to preach the whole council, man. But as you do that, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, as you do that, the next time you preach it, you better have some work done in that thing you're preaching. Unless when you preach something, you're like, mm, I kind of know what he's doing. He doesn't do that. That's where the hypocrisy thing comes in. Folks, none of us live everything we preach, but you ought to be striving towards it for the incorruptible crown. I'll, I'll show what the word God means. Go with me to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, please. Like I said, most of these crowns are from the Pauline epistles, Brother, prayers, uh, Brother Bert's prayers have been answered. 2 Timothy. It is strange how I gave it to one man. All this. It's bizarre, man. The rapture, the Lord's. I mean, no, we're not Paul only. Don't freak out. We're not hyper. Right? Well, uh, most of us are not hyper. <laughs> I mean, anyway, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Brother Kenny, if you could, 2, 1 through 5. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 5. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they did heed. I, did, did I say something wrong? Yeah. I did. Second Timothy 2, 1 through 5, right? Yeah. I thought I said 2. You're reading 4, aren't you? Yeah. I thought I said chapter 2. If I messed up, oh. I messed up. No. Oh, I went to my our reference. Get out. <laughs> our reference. See, that's how easy it is. What's my letter of membership? Get out. <laughs> so 2 Timothy? 2 Timothy 2. Yep. We had a big day in the sun yesterday, Ken, so yeah. we're kind of big. 2 no, 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 no. yeah. Timothy 2, 1 through 5. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I say things wrong from time to time. I do make this. <laughs> it's like Fonzie saying, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 2, 1 through 5, man. Yeah. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ, Jesus Christ. No man that warreth and entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. There you go that he may please him who hath chose, chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully? Masteries? What was what did Paul call himself to the inspiration of the Holy Ghost over in 1 
Corinthians 3. He's a wise what? So as messed up as Paul was at times, like, you know, shaving head up and, and all those things and, you know, uh, calling out the white sepulcher, God's a smite thee, thou white sepulcher, and all that stuff. God allowed that man to say, you know what? Uh, are, you, are you serving Jesus Christ? I speak foolishly. I'm born. You mean there's people out there who do more for the Lord than I do and you? Yes. With the right reason, the right motive, and God will reward them accordingly. But they better do it, and I better do it lawfully. The incorruptible crown. You can't just say, go out there, hand out tracts, and do it unlawfully. You can't fast on. I mean, you see, that that's crazy. No. Uh, Christians have a weird way, excuse me, say me about a weird way of one toe in the world, one toe in the Bible. The Lord's going to look at that and go, well, that's, that's a corruptible crown. That's one that's got some divots in it. A little bit of rust in the corner. No, to have an incorruptible crown, you've got to strive lawfully. Or else the crown is not going to be given to you. Brother Paul Riano, 2 Samuel. I'll give you an Old Testament reference on it. 2 Samuel, chapter 23. 2 Samuel 23. That was enough New Testament. i got to get back into the law. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it, man. 2 Samuel, Brother Paul, can you get uh, 23, verses 1, 2, and 3, please? Now these be the last words of David. David the son of Jesse said, And the man who was raised up on time and anointed him, the God of Jacob, in the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, mm -hmm. and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. <laughs> you want to have the crown? You want to rule over men? You better be just in your doings. They ought not to look at the king and say, that king doesn't, he just hands down dictates, but he doesn't live in any of that himself. He's not faithful in anything. He's not just in any of his doing. He doesn't pay his bills. He doesn't, he's not just. But he's got the crown. I'm the king, do what I say. I, yeah, I can't care about one night. I don't really care about God. The king doesn't get told what to do. She called me on the phone the other day. She said, slow my roll. She said, slow my roll. Like, oh, I have to bring out. Slow my roll. To me. The king. The emperor. You don't say it to the emperor. It was hilarious. Until she got home. How was, How was your temperance? Uh, it was terrible. <laughs> man, I was, that glass was smashed. I was breaking stuff, man. You can't believe it, man. I almost bent my iPhone. <laughs> the woman thou gave us me. Slow your wall. Slow your woman. But anyway, he that ruleth over, ruleth over men must be just. That's all part of the incorruptible crown, striving lawfully. I'll give you one more on this and we'll, we'll move on. Proverbs 16. When I said we're going to get to the crown thing, John was like, yeah, right. We're going to get through one point of one crown on one diet down, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, Brother Bird, Proverbs. 1631. You say, well, this is a, this is crazy, man. I never heard anything. No, well, just read it, man. I think you'll think you get some out of it. Lord will. The hoary head is a crown of glory. It could be found in the way of righteousness. Isn't that crazy? What's a hoary head? H O. Just over there in the back. And I'm getting some right now. What's a hoary head? It's frosty. It's whitish. Well, they're old. They must be old. The Lord. They really serve the Lord. Not if you're a stinking wretch. Well, you ought to give him honor and glory. He's been saved 65,000 years. Well, if he's lived his life like a devil, he doesn't deserve any crown of righteousness. Right. Well, they're the most senior in the church. Put him up with the elder. Has he proved himself? Is he faithful? Has he had a just life? Has he paid his bills? Does he have a good witness in his neighborhood? Well, not, then sit him down. The hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. Well, they're so old the Lord, they must be doing good for the Lord. No, you make some of the oldest saints are the most cantankerous, stinking bag of rattlesnakes you ever run across in your life. But they got a hoary head. Well, who's thinking cares? I've mentioned to you before, the one guy that always got the Father's Day Award for being saved the longest. Noah led him to Christ on the ark. That's how, <laughs> that's how. No, if you're out there in TV land, no one didn't think anybody Christ. Noah's not a Christian. Anyway. Amen. He'd see, he'd see stand up and he'd stand up and go through and how he, you know, the 
preacher would say, how many people have been saved five years, and how many have been saved, you know, he just go, I'm like, how many people have been saved 1.3 years, how many people, I'm like, yeah, he's going to win it, give it to him. It's like Bert Debbie winning the Home Depot card. <laughs> No, if, you, if you've never been there, it's it's rigged. <laughs> Take on the bottom. Oh, Bert Hugshaw. <laughs> that's not a crown. That's not the incredible crown, but you better get your Home Depot crown. You ain't getting the incredible Take your $5 gift certificate on the Millennial Kingdom sale. <laughs> so anyway, he'd get the award every year. And I'm like, okay, I get it. I get, you know what? I give him some credit. He's, he, he's a... He's a barnacle. He's been around. He was on Ahab's ship, man, on the white whale. I get it, man. But I, I've never heard him witness. Never heard him give any verse of I didn't say he's not speaking. I'm just saying, I'm like, is that in a way? I don't know. Because you're well, you're an elder person, you just get it. And uh, no, the crown of glory is on You say, what's well, like, I understand that. But it's it goes with the righteousness. A king's got to be just. If you're going to get one in 2 Timothy, you've got you to strive awfully. You gotta keep under your body and bring in our subjection, man. That's for every, folks, these are not preachers' crowns. This is Christian, saved people crowns. Mother well, Guido, yes, the hoary head speaks. Go ahead. First Corinthians, he who beateth the air, that's a shadow boxer. Yeah, man. And that guy you're talking about, I know what you mean. Yes. That's all he did. Shadow box. Never got in the ring with any kind of enemy. Shadow box is great, but until you actually have to yeah. You know, what Mike Tyson used to say? Everybody yeah. had a plan. <laughs> I wouldn't say if he's here right now, but. <laughs> Everybody has a plan, but I'll go down the window when you get punched in the mouth. <laughs> you're right, you can shadow box all you want. You're the world champ until you got to cross the line, step in the ring, and you find out, wow, I'm bleeding like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Kind of, kind of, uh, incorruptible ground. Wow, we're not going to get into this. this <laughs> That's okay. Wow, man. First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter two, please. Brother Steve, you here? Yes, all right, man. Make sure you're all right, man. I ran these by Steve before I did them to make sure they were right, so they're homiletically and polemically secure. So how am I going to do this one? Let's do. Uh, Go ahead, Brother Steve. You can pick it up. You know where I'm going to go. If you could do, um, can you go 17 to 20? 1 Thessalonians 2, 17 to 20. So we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, for once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope? For joy, for crown of rejoicing. Are not you the the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For he are our joy and our joy. Amen. So what would this be in the context? Who what's the crown of rejoicing linked to in this context? Do you guys know? Brother Paul? Yeah, I mean people call it the soul winner's crown. Now you you and I both know we don't win people to Christ. Now I know Paul said by all my means by save some and, and wins. I, I understand all that. But he also knew that the Lord Jesus Christ does the same. You and I do the planting, we do our watering, our planting the watering, the Lord gives the increase. But this is this is the involvement of people's souls being redeemed from hell, man. Uh, the church does not exist to see people saved. It exists to train up the saints. But you know what the saints do after they get trained up? They go out into a world that's dead in trespass and sin, people dead in trespass and sin, and you try to witness to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Has any, I'm not doing this embarrassment. Has anybody personally led somebody to Christ in this room? One on one. It's one of the coolest things you ever do. You know what? That kind of wipes away everything going on in your life. I can't describe it, man. Doesn't it give you rejoicing? Have you ever had a bad time witnessing in the street after you got past your flash? Have you ever had a bad time hanging on a gospel track and the Lord opens the door? It causes rejoicing. Like nothing else does on the face of the earth. Because you know what's inside you? The Spirit of God. He just wants to come out and talk about the Savior. Yep. Right. It's just bubbling out of you, man. He's, I, I'm like, I want to talk to him, but the flesh says, no, nah, somebody else would get him. You get real Calvinistic about that sometimes. It's weird, man. It's weird. But the crowd of rejoicing, he says, are not even he. He's talking to his brethren at Thessalonica. He says, you know what? 
you're our crown of rejoicing. Folks, we've seen turn to Christ. In fact, when he, doesn't he say earlier, you've turned from these idols to serve the living and true God? Pretty wild stuff, man. Go with me over to Proverbs. I know it's an Old Testament passage, but it's a common one. Brother Guido, we're back to you, so I know standing up helps your back, so that's good. Proverbs 11. I know, I know it's an old, and I, listen folks, I understand when you go to the Old Testament, you have to be very careful because a soul can refer to a body because they're still stuck together. Okay? Uh, there's no spiritual circumcision in the Old Testament like Colossians 2.11 says. So, just be very wise about that. Uh, I know this is a great verse, and people have used it to start many a soul winning campaign. Just be careful. That's all. We're going to use it. We're going to move on down the road. Uh, the Bible says that Abraham got a bunch of souls when he left where the Chaldees. Well, that, that's his family. It's a great picture, but it's it's his family, really. I mean, you know. Uh, when you get on a ship, what do they typically say when the ship sinks? Uh, how many souls belong to You know, uh, how many souls belong to yep. What they don't know is if you're not with you without Christ, your soul really is lost. Yeah. Go ahead, Brother Guido, 1130, if you could. 1130. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that one of souls is wise. Thank you. Daniel chapter 12. Brother Steve, see, see, I, I got it, man, I got it. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know if I don't say it, you'll hack my head off like a Muslim. I know. <laughs> Daniel 12. <laughs> Daniel 12. Brother Jonathan, Daniel 12, if you could, please. If you could, um, 1, 2, and 3. Daniel 12, 1, 2, and 3, please. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting death. And they that be wise shall sign as the brightness of the firmament, and that they turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. Now I, I understand where you're at. I, I fully I, I go go to James Five. I'll show you another just to throw just to throw everybody's doctrinal meter off this morning. James and Daniel and Proverbs just to mess everybody up. Don't you rightly divide? Of course I do. It's because I do. I can use these verses. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Right. I can go to Matthew 5 and preach out of Matthew 5, and you guys don't go, oh, what are you, what's he doing, man? You say you're stupid like that. I am stupid like that. Folks go to Matthew 5 and try to teach Christian doctrine. I'll explain what's really going on there doctrinally. You've got to be real careful about that. But all scriptures given by inspiration to God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction, and righteousness. That doesn't mean you, we're not taking it out of context, but it's just things to get you to think about. I'm involved in being a good witness for Jesus Christ, and so are you. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. We're supposed to shine as lights in the midst of a crooked, perverse nation without murmurs and disputings, as sons of God, blameless and all, and harmless and all that in Philippians. We're supposed to be in the business of looking at people and saying, you know what? I don't know if they're lost or saved, but I'd rather not take a chance. Lord, do you want me to talk to them or not? Lord, I got some tracks in my car. I don't really have time getting gas right now. Uh, there's really nobody around to talk to. Uh, stick one in the gas bottle. I keep bringing that up because that's an easy way to give out a gospel track, man. Leave one in the toilet, man. What else they got to do in there? <laughs> leave, them all, leave tracks around where you can, man. I, I remember uh, it was a couple years ago now, specifically because I got some feedback from the fellows on the shop floor in Hamilton. I pinned a heaven to hell one right on the union board at the bottom. I've done that many times. I leave them in the bathrooms. And of course, I get the usual, you know, got one of your pamphlets. <laughs> I said, how do you know it was mine? Oh, we know it's you. Look at this. Better than me going for smashing stuff and going to Travis on people, <laughs> which I do when they don't want to rob. Got to be a good witness for Jesus Christ. You know why? I'd like to see some people in heaven. Yep. 
That's the crown of rejoicing. It's not that I want to earn the crown. It's I get the crown because I'm happy to see people saved. The crown of rejoicing is I get to go up. Mom, dad, brother, sister. I can't say that, man. My family's not saved. Except for my brother Mark. I'm talking about my, my immediate family. I think my mom got saved in 1983. 84, my brother Mark was on the road out in California uh, pitching against the Oakland A's or playing for the Orioles against the Oakland A's. I think he led them on in Christ. That's the testimony. I'm not doubting it, but, but my dad, brother Frank, still alive, Terry, nieces, a nephew down of lost without Christ as far as I know. You've got co-workers that as much as you love being around them, it'll be a great day of rejoicing if they get saved. And when we all go up, and the Lord says, good job. Here's a crown for you. You know the money you give and Bibles to get out and missionaries you support and things like that? God puts that towards this crown when people get saved. you got to think just beyond Vernon again. Or your hometown. It's pretty cool. All right, James 5. Who's up, Brother Kenny? Uh, Brother, Brother Kenny, you got James 5? See. Yeah, I, was, I, I could not give James five for Brother Bird, man. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be explosion of the head, man. Um, 16 to 20, Brother Kenny, just for the sake of time of where we're at. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one another, that you may be held, healed, held it. No, okay. Held it, healed it. Yeah, if you look at it, confess your faults one to another, yeah. pray for one another, that you may be healed. healed. Now, there's going to be stuff going on in the tribulation period, wormwood and all that stuff. Any, um, I, I've never, i got to stay focused. i gotta, I got Jonathan and Jennifer staring at me right now. So i got, I got to stay on point here. Keep going. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject like passions right. as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth, but the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which convert the, the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Multitude of sins. Multitude. Now, I, I, man, you can't miss it. It's Elijah and healing, and I, I get it, man. Don't try to scare it abroad. I'm, I'm with you, man. But you do know the first part of the book of Acts, how many people were saved. Do you remember there's two instances in particular? Do you, Does anybody remember the number of people who were saved on two big instances? There was there was one of, there's three, and then there was one more. They had 8,000 people saved in the span of weeks, months, man. And that's before James is even dead, so I, I, I know where we're at. I understand completely where we're at. Well, I don't convert them either to you, but I ought to be in the business of going out and trying to win people to Christ. Whether it's publicly or personally or whatever, I don't know. How about you pray for them? How about you pray they get saved? But you know what? Put some feet to your prayer. Say, Lord, would you give me an opportunity to talk to somebody today about Jesus Christ? Those are the best doors that God could ever open. Is when God does it, you don't have to manufacture it. No pressure on you, no anything. And somebody out of nowhere says, hey, um, I, I see that Bible on your desk, and I see a verse that's up in your... I mean, what is that all about anyway? The door just swung wide open. Yep. It's phenomenal, man. We were, at, uh, we were at the detention center one night. I think I may have told you this, but again, I'm getting older now, so no shark cartilage, so I'm getting my protein levels are down. But uh, we were at detention center one night, and what we used to do is we play basketball with the kids, and then we'd have 20, 25 minutes, you know, cards along the, along the wall, and I'd be in the middle of the gymnasium, and the kids, after we're done playing, would sit around. And they could ask any Bible question they want to, and I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, where Cain get his wife, and God make a rock so big he can't lift it, you know, all the crazy stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm prepared, I've got my mind to steal, I'm praying, I was praying to Carton and the Lord, you know, whatever it is, I can't answer, just Help me to say I don't know what it is. Nothing wrong with saying that. I don't know the answer. So I'm getting in and I'm, I'm kind of I'm nervous about what's going on. I'm like, what are they going to ask him now? And a kid throws up his hand after we're done playing basketball. I'm in the middle. And I said, uh, 
sons of God, the aliens, UFOs, Ezekiel 1, explain the beast. And he goes to this, he goes, I have a question. He goes, so how do you get saved? I said, that's it. <laughs> See, I was looking for some big mystery of, you know, why the ice caps are melting and why the polar bear gets stuck out there. Could you explain the world when Job 38 and a kid just raised hand and says, so how do you get saved anyway? That is the big Sinbad cartoon character in the open sesame and the door opens wide up and you're like, I had to turn around first. I'm like, I don't even know if I am saved. Uh, let, me, <laughs> let, me look, let me look for my notes around here. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Turn to Zeke. I'll show you how you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. You'd rather have the Lord do that for you. But that's part of the rejoicing. Yeah. You don't win them, but man, I, I want to have some souls to my account. So we go up together to glory. Because yeah. as much as you hate that person, you won't talk to about the Lord. You will rue the day you see him on the other side of the great white throne of judgment. You'll rue the day when God says, get out of here. You'll rue the day that as much bitterness and anger you had towards that lost person, they ended up not getting saved. I'm not saying it's because of you and whatever anger or bitterness you had towards them. You'll rue the day you see him go off the cliff of eternity and rain that lake of fire and swing forever. There'll be no rejoicing. Get as many as you can. I don't know. Is the net full yet? Is there 153 fishes in there? Well, I don't know. Try and go on against me as you can. It's kind of rejoicing. All right. Wow. Cool. Man. Jonathan, I'm moving as fast as I can get. Second Timothy. Second Timothy 4. You think that's bad. Wait until Galatians 4 starts to like. And I read it, you're like, yeah, okay. We're getting one word in, and that's the end of that. You know what? I'm going to go with purple because I'm transitioning. Purple is actually loyal. Go to 2 Timothy 4. Who did I leave off with? Oh, Brother Paul. Oh, Paul for a Pauline epistle. This is phenomenal. A common one. Six. Uh, you know what? Go 6 through 10, please. 6 through 10, if you could. For I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure. I have fought a good fight. Therefore, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all them that love me. Do thy diligence to come short again for me. For he must have forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, preaching in Galatians, or two Galatians. No, you're, you're good. Alright, oh no, I'm sorry, read the whole thing. That's my fault. I forgot about it. Titus unto Dalmatia. Thank you. So the crown of rejoicing, honestly, uh, go, go to Titus 2. Of the crowns, this should be the easiest one to earn. For, for just, I think, simple reasons. Uh, the, the biggest one being, do you love his appearing? Mm -hmm. The appearing in the Pauline epistles for the day of Christ, it's us getting up out of here. The Lord coming in the clouds and pulling us up, which remain or are alive, to go to be with Him forevermore. Even if you get taken out and die, go to be home with the Lord. Do you, are you looking forward to see Him for the right reason? I know preachers for years have used to say this. You know, you don't want to ever caught me doing something when the Lord comes back. And I understand what they were trying to say, and they tried to put some pressure on you, some heat. But that's not a bad thought to have. But it ought to transition from, you know what? I don't want to be caught doing something wrong. I want to love him enough not to be involved in that which is wrong. Yeah. You see where it goes? It goes from, I just love him. I want to see him. Not because I'm in debt. Not because my life is miserable. Not because I have no food in my belly. I want to see him because I just love him. And I can't wait to go, well, the Lord's going to come back and set all the wrongs right. He is. But is that really why you want to see him? Or just because he died for you, he still got the wounds, and one day you're going to live. You just love him because he is who he is. I mean, come on, folks. Uh, you, folk, you people have been married here for a little while. And by a little while, I mean more than probably five, ten years at least. 
Are you telling me the wife you're with or the husband you're with is in the same physical shape they were 20, 25 years ago? Well, I'm just saying that you get old, man. As Dr. Peacock says, you go from a Coke bottle figure to a quart of mayonnaise. He said that, I didn't. But it is true. We all have a tendency to have gravity take over. So love has to be more than just physical appearance. It has to be something that grows between you. I don't know about you, I have followed my wife from time to time. That's gonna shock you. I'm not the most pleasant person to get along with. I think I am, <laughs> but that's just a personal view though, of course. It might be skewed, it might be skewed, you know, it might be a hanging jack. But you have to grow to love one another, because you're not gonna get along with each other. Uh, she does not do everything I want her to do. She should, but she doesn't. And I certainly, well actually I do everything she does want. And I don't know, there has to be more there than just physical attraction, because guess what, that goes away after a while. I'm not saying you still don't look at your woman and go, you know, that uh, she's the most beautiful woman in the world. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying love is more than just the, the you know, that instantaneous when you look at somebody and go, oh wow, they're, you know, they're smoking. <laughs> <laughs> they're hot. That's not that. Yeah, they're going to be real hot if they don't get saved. Yeah. Anyway, but you think about that for a minute. Love is, is more than just the attraction of the eye. You have to, you have to grow to love someone. What's weird is about us being saved, we typically dampen our love after we've been saved a while for Jesus Christ. Isn't that true? I mean, 95% of the people that you talk to and deal with that are saved, weren't they maybe more fervent when they first got saved than they are now? Why is that? Shouldn't your love increase when you get to know Him more and more? And, well, that's what the crown of righteousness is. Brother Guido, make a comment, please. Go ahead. 25 years for us this week. 25 years? Amen. 25 years, that's five times five, five the number of death. She's on a lot of prayers. Yeah, that's it. Five, yes, Brother Bird, five times five. It was already there. It was loaded. <laughs> Titus 2, where am I at? Uh, Brother Bird, Titus 2. 11 to 15, please. And if we're not going to read, I'm not going to redo all the verses on this. There's just no reason until we covered it during the rapture versus the second coming difference. So go ahead, Brother Burke. For the grace of God that brings us salvation that we appear to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing Amen. of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify in himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority that no man despise them. What are you looking for this morning? What, 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 what is the thing, what is the, the passion and desire of your heart? That's what's going to come up with this kind of righteousness. Well, everybody's going to love to see Jesus. No, 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 no. I, I know it's the second coming, but there's people that don't want to see him. That's what separates our rapture from there and the second coming. But I think there's some safe people who don't want to come back because of whatever. They're not a peculiar people. They're not zealous of good works. They don't live soberly righteously in God in this present world. And they don't want, they, they love the salvation, but they don't love the Savior. They love not going to hell, but they don't like the glory they're called to to live like that glory, right. holy and separate. And that's what's behind the crown of righteousness. I mean, you, you, say, why, you, you might be asking yourself, why did I have Brother Paul read all the way to verse 10? Who shows up in verse 10 of that passage of 2 Timothy? Our old buddy who? Uh, Demas. What did Demas do? Because of what? He's with him in Philemon. He's with him in Colossians. What happened to Demas? He lost the love of his Savior. He started loving the world as a saved man more than loving the appearing of his king. You think he got the crown of righteousness based on the information we have? Demas is right in the past. That's why I had Brother Paul read it because, well, well everybody loves the appearing. Nah, nah, nah. Not love the way you think. You really love him. You need to examine that. I do too. 
do I really want to see my Savior because I just love him or because I'm in a, you know, gas is five bucks or whatever? <laughs> do I really love him because, you know, real estate prices? No, I want to love him because I love him because he is who he is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and every man that hath this hope and purifieth himself. That's 1 John 3, 1 through 3. I don't, it doesn't appear what we are right now. We don't know, but when we see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope and purifies himself, he will see him here. It's kind of rejoicing, man. I know, I know, man, I know. Should we press on or shut it down, man? It's 10, it's 10 of 11 already. That's 50 minutes in a heartbeat. You know what? We'll shut it down. We'll shut it down. It's much of press to move on. Into the Sunday hour, but we'll see. Maybe it'll change. But Bert, pray for us, please, be good. And the Father, thank you for the word of God. Lord, thank you that you don't leave us uh, not only for the salvation that we know before we get there, but what pleases you and what Amen. what we can do to how to approach it to hear the words from you and have you pleased with our lives, Lord, thank you. You just spell it out for us. And uh, Lord, that you thank you that you are altogether lovely and that you are uh, deserving of all honor and our praise and love and devotion and everything we can give you. Uh, I know we fall far short of that, Lord, but we're still worthy of it. I pray that we would look at it that way, help us to love you more and actually you love your appearing for who you are. Amen. Amen.